This video is sponsored by Taylor Brands. More on them later. What is there that you know you need to do, that you want to do this, but for some reason or another, you've been holding back? For some reason or another, you just have not been able to gather your nerves or be able to work through the procrastinating or putting it off or justifying or blaming. Some reason or another, you just haven't done it. And you know you ought to do this. You really want to do this, but you don't know why you haven't done it. Now, first of all, we know that this is not easy because in order to begin to reinvent your life, you've got to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort that you really have got to put all of yourself into it. It's very challenging to act, to do those things. There are times when you're looking at it and you say, I know I need to do this, but I don't feel like it. I don't want to do it. I know I need to do it, yet leave me alone. No, I don't want to do it. So what do we do? What are those things that, that cause us to do like that? I think that among the things that prevent us from acting is the fear of failure. And if you've already failed, you don't want to fail again. The pain of that, the disappointment, the fear of loss is another thing. Because many times when we do those things that we know we need to do, we feel that we might lose somebody that we love very much and care about. We don't want to hurt anybody. Many of us don't act because we want other people's approval. We want everybody to like us and to accept us. And that's not possible. Many of us don't do the things that we want to do and don't act because of lack of self-confidence. We don't believe enough in ourselves. I have a friend who's been working on a job where she's miserable, talented, want to go to another place that she can do what she wants to do and make the kind of money that she would like to make and have had some offers. But because of her fear and her lack of self-confidence of things might not work out, she won't take a chance on herself. So there she is spending eight hours a day, five days a week, and she's miserable. She hates to go to work. They're not paying her what she's worth. She knows it. But yet and still, she won't do that which she knows she must do, and it's wearing her out. There are a lot of people that their jobs are making them sick because they won't act. You check out the absenteeism and the people that are depressed. You see them coming to work angry. How are you doing? I don't know. Have another friend, this guy's brilliant. He's a business consultant. He helped a lot of people get their business started and people come to him because they know he's knowledgeable. But this guy won't start his own business. Now he's very smart. He can do it. Everybody believes in him except him. And he's so smart he's talked himself out of where the numbers aren't right. So there are many reasons why we don't act. There are other things though that affect us is that not wanting to take personal responsibility. We want somebody else to do it. And we, many times we pick up our inability to do certain things from people that we love, people that we admire. We identify with them and we live in the context of their ideas, their opinions and their life patterns. We buy into it unconsciously. My mother is a pack rat. She keeps everything. She doesn't throw anything away. And I have unconsciously picked that up. Many times unconsciously, we try to honor the people we love by being like them. By the same token, I realized something about myself when I had some major decisions to make and I found myself acting like my mother. See, my mother's the kind of person that when she has a problem with one of the other foster children that she adopted, she won't confront them. She will call me. Les, why don't you tell Linda to move? She's lazy. She won't go to work. She runs the street all day and then she comes home and wants to sleep all day. And I think she's doing drugs. I said, but mama, why don't you tell Linda that? I bought the house for you. I told you when she wanted to come home, don't let a grown person come there and take care of them. You let her in. Well, after all, she's my child. Mama then you handle that. When I tell her to leave, she say, Mama say, I can say, Mama, can I say? And you tell her yes, and then you call me and say, she's still here. <laughs> Why worry me with this? So Mama hasn't developed the courage to act on that. Some people won't act until there's a crisis situation. When Linda starts stealing from Mama and took her social security check, 
to get some drugs. Mama got some courage to say, get out of here. And don't ever come back. But she wouldn't do it until then. And see, we don't have to wait until a crisis situation. But there's some people, it takes that kind of crisis to bring them into reality in order for them to act in their own best interest. Some people have to hit rock bottom in order to rise. I don't know why. You want to begin to look out on your life and what you want for you. And I think that when we begin to focus in the area of what does it take for us to act, I think we can say events can inspire us to act at that particular event in his life. Circumstances, a friend of mine, he wanted to do something and, and he just did not have the motivation and the drive and the confidence within himself. But his circumstances change overnight through an acquisition of the company that he worked for. He lost his job through the inspiration of desperation. He had to act. See, life also are things that can inspire us to act. See, we don't have the courage, and that's what it takes, courage. It takes guts to do that which you know you need to do. If you don't have the courage to act, life many times will move on you and make you act. Life will whoop your butt so bad, you will be so miserable, you will catch so much hell, you say, yes, I will do it. What do you want me to do? Take me. A friend of mine said, I can't stop smoking. I can't stop smoking. Doctor said, Sam Axelrod, you have emphysema. Sam never picked up another cigarette. And said, look at those stupid people smoking. Sam, you did it for 35 years. How can you talk about people? Well, I was different. I'm, I'm trying to help them. They don't have to do the same thing I did. But be compassionate, Sam. Isn't it interesting how quickly we forget? So I'm saying that look at something in your life. It might be just writing a letter to somebody to say thank you. It might be just to apologize to somebody. I had a confrontation in the Penobscot building with the security guard there. He responded to me what I perceived as a negative way, and he and I engaged in an argument. I did not like the way I handled that. I avoided going through the front door for a long time because I didn't want to face him. Finally, I decided to act, and I went up to him and said, I want to apologize to you for the way in which I handled this argument we had the other day. I was wrong. I hope you accept my apology. He said, I do. And I said, thank you very much. I felt relieved. Now, when you decide to act, it's not always going to be like that. Are you gaping about how to kickstart your business idea with a whiff of creativity? Guess what? It's easier than ever. Imagine an AI-driven, one-stop shop for your startup or business idea, a full package of what you need without any hassle. Sounds extraordinary, right? Well, you don't need to imagine this anymore. Taylor Brands has turned this imagination into a reality. Get ready to ace the game of incredible merch designing and build your website with your preferred domain in a blink of an eye, quite literally. Isn't it a complete pack of a boost to boom your business towards great heights of success? Why waste your money on different platforms to get the job done when Taylor Brands can serve you with all the necessary aspects at a one stop? Let's enter out the name and tagline. Let's choose the type of logo we want, and it will take a few seconds to load. So, from all the nice logos that are generated, we are selecting this one. What we need next is a domain. I'm searching here whether the domain name successposters.com is available. Yeah, it is. Let's create the website using their automatic website builder tool. Yeah, I like that theme, so let's go with it. Phew, that was fast. Here, I'm creating a digital business card. And that was fast too. I'm also going to create some merch for the store. These are looking cool. The logo is going so well with the merch. So here comes the best advantage of Taylor Brands. You can easily start the process of forming an LLC in just minutes. Here we go. That was a lot faster than expected. I recommend you to check out Taylor Brands if you're someone who wants to take action on your business ideas. You gotta give it a try, Taylor Brands. Yes, try it for free. And if you like it, you can use the link below for a limited time, 20% off discount on Taylor brand plans. See, many things we don't do is because of the fact we want people to like us. There's some necessary losses in life. When you decide acting in your best interest, you're going to lose some friends. Everybody's not going to approve of you. There's some people that won't like you. Who do you think you are? You're arrogant. What do you think you can do? You think you can get away with that? You're selfish. 
thanks, I got that. And so what I'm saying to you is that as you begin to look out on your life, this is challenging. This is not easy acting. So what are the things that we can begin to do to harness our will? Number one, you've got to bring it out and look at it. You've got to take the power out of it. You've got to expose it to the truth. And the truth is that it has no power over you. So write down something you want to act on, but for some reason that you've been holding back and look at it. The next thing is, ask yourself the question, is it helping you to continue to put it off? If it's an asset for you to continue to, to procrastinate, then continue to do that. But if it's a liability for you, if it's causing you some mental and some emotional challenges or perhaps a financial problem, look at that. Examine that for what it is. Next step, ask yourself, what's blocking you? What's preventing you from acting? Why don't you have the courage to handle that? Why won't you face that? What are you running away from? What kind of avoidance behavior are you engaged in? Next is, what is the worst thing that can happen when you take action? So I looked at that and I said, what's the worst thing can happen when I tell him this? He can say, I don't like you. And he did. Now what happened? I experienced that. I looked at that. I saw that. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I didn't die. My feelings were hurt a little bit. I lost some sleep about it, and sometimes I think about it when I drive past his house, but I'm still here. It's uncomfortable, but it's okay. It doesn't bother me anymore. I've gotten used to it now. So what is the worst thing that can happen? I want you to visualize that, experience that, feel the nervousness and the discomfort. And the more you run it in your mind, the less power that it will have. Next is, how will you feel after taking this action? When we look out on our lives, you ask the question, what are you going to do? Look at, as you think about this that you know you need to handle, what are you going to do? And then write down three strong reasons on why you know you must take action. And be explicit and descriptive in your reasons because your reasons have power. Your reasons will drive you. When you have doubt, when your faith becomes weak, your reasons will fortify your faith. When you have an inner conversation, say, no, don't do that. Your reasons will become your rod and your staff to comfort you, to take you through those challenging moments. So write down your reasons. And what you will find, that when you decide to act, when you decide to take life on, and let me warn you, it can be painful, it will be uncomfortable, and that's where the growth is. When you're uncomfortable, when you're stretching out, when you're taking life by the collar, you're going to get thrown to the ground again and again and again. But when you have determination and you know that what you're doing is right, it gives you your life, it gives a special meaning and power to you, you will have some power from on high. You will discover some things about yourself that will begin to electrify your personality. You'll begin to discover some things about you that you don't know you've got when you put yourself in that type of challenging situation. So I started talking to other people and I would ask them what they were doing and I said, but is that your passion? And they would say, no. I said, then what's your real passion? And they would tell me what their real passion was. Then I said, well then why aren't you doing what you really want to do? Oh, I can do it, but, and they would continue on. So this word, you know, but just kept on coming up. And then it also has some friends like woulda and coulda and shoulda. <laughs> And one day, I'm going to have my own business. Those people who talk about one day, I'm going to. So how is it that many times we block ourselves and we use these words almost like we are in a trance, like we're sleepwalking through life, that we find ways to cancel out our dreams. And I think that but is a dream killer, that a lot of things that we want to do, a lot of places we would like to go, a lot of things we would like to experience, and we just stop at but, and we build a case. In fact, I was reading something the other day that, that talked about but, it says but is an argument for our limitations, and when we argue for our limitations, we get to keep them. See, but will cause you to procrastinate, but will cause you to hide out behind fear, but will cause you to come up with all type of excuses that you can validate your inaction and not acting on your dream.
And right now, more than ever, people need to look for ways to live their dream. People need, need to look for ways to make it on their own. There is no such thing as job security. There's no such thing as a storm-proof or tragic-proof life. There are no guarantees today, ladies and gentlemen. The illusion is gone. There was a time when, when we graduated from high school, you were told, go to college and get out, and you go and work for a corporation for 30 or 40 years, and give your gold watch and you'll retire. Special announcement, that day is gone. <laughs> that day is gone, never to return again. So instead of people living in fear, feeling stressed out, feeling powerless, feeling like victims, I think it should be a time that we need to begin to look at ways that we can become an active force in our own lives. Look at ways when we can decide to take charge of our own destiny. Look at ways when we can decide to design a life of substance and begin to truly live our dreams. And it's time for people to decide, I'm ready to get on with my life. Now, you know, a lot of people say, I'm going to live my life one day when things get right, when I get all my bills paid, when I get my feet on the ground. See, there are no problem-free moments. Always something there to build a case on why you can't move on, why you can't grow to the next level, why you can't begin to manifest your greatness, why you can't begin to live life on your terms. Always something there to block you, to keep you where you are, and keep you from beginning to develop your true greatness. Always some fear. How do we handle it? And I'm saying that if you've been hiding out behind but, if you've been using the fact that you don't have enough money or you don't have the education, take it head on. Go get the education. I was saying to a guy the other day who was saying, he, he, I said, how old are you? He said, 47 years old. I said, your sister tell me that you can't read. He said, that's right. I said, why? Well, you know, I, I, I didn't go to school. Excuse me, how old are you? I'm 47. 47? Yes. And you can't read or write? Yes. Have you ever heard of adult school, adult education? Have, have you decided that you should learn how to read to begin to expand your world? Why are you using that as a racket? Why don't you decide now that you're going to expand your world? That if other people can learn, you could learn too. Well, it's hard for me. How do you have you been and sit in a class yet? Have you signed up yet? No, I haven't. See, a lot of people say no, ladies and gentlemen, to things, and they don't even know what they're saying no to. They haven't even challenged themselves. He hasn't even gone to sit into a class and say, teach me how to read. Instead, it's been easier for him to go through life, he thinks, trying to play a whole con game, pretending he knows how to do something that he doesn't know how to do. And you know what? Most of us go through life like that. Most of us go through life pretending. Pretending that we're satisfied where we are. Pretending that everything is okay. Pretending that, that we don't have any special goals or ambitions or desires. When really deep down inside we do really want more. But if you look at our behavior, if you judge based upon what we do, that really will tell you some true stories about people because you have to judge a tree by the fruit it bears, not the fruit that it talks about. See, a lot of people pretend that they want more out of life, but all you have to do is watch their actions. That will tell you something. People will tell you, oh yeah, one day I want to have a restaurant. See, they're pretending they want to go into business for themselves. They're not serious. How can you tell less? Watch their actions. Watch what they're doing. The proof is in the pudding. So if you want to do something, if you thought about something you want to do, take it head on. Decide that you're going to start looking at it, start doing research on it, start tackling it, start becoming involved in whatever and wherever it might lead you to begin to explore the possibilities in that particular thing that you're seeking so that you can begin to learn all you can about it. Decide that you're going to face it, that whatever shortcomings you have, that you're going to strengthen yourself there. Whatever training that's required, that you're going to go get that training that you're going to get started right now. And George Washington Carver would say, do what you can, where you are with what you have, and never be satisfied. S.P. Fuller used to say, and I heard Joe Dudley talk about, always strive to be more than that which you are. Yeah, don't get satisfied with yourself. Always know that wherever you are, you can enjoy more, that you deserve more. But most people, you know what they do? Most people go through life quietly and safely, tiptoeing to an early grade. Find out what it is you want, and go after it as if your life depends on it. Why? Because it does. People that have found their passion, 
people that found the things that they love, people that have found the things that they can pour their lives into, those people live longer. I was in New York and I had to do a seminar at a special church and a guy by the name of Reverend Johnny Youngblood. And I said, how is it that you were able to build this big housing facility and got all of the various community and religious groups together to, to have this dwelling for 2,000 residents that were, were once homeless? How were you able to take on this responsibility? Wasn't it overwhelming? He said, the kind of work I do, he said, it's in me. I've got to live what's in me. And I think that's everybody's desire in life. You've got to live what's in you. Life is just too short and unpredictable. But what, are, what do we say? But, but there always be tomorrow. Oh, no. There are no guarantees you're going to show up tomorrow. There are a lot of people who were here yesterday that they're not here today. There are a lot of opportunities that were around yesterday. They're not here today. Oh, you can wait, but you know what Abraham Lincoln said? Well, good things might come to those who, to, who wait, but only the things that have been left over by those who hustle. The leftovers that somebody has left you. So take it head on, begin to explore it. Here's something else. Decide to do it now. Decide whatever you want to do, that you are now going to become actively involved right now exploring the possibilities for you that you're going to look at it and do just a little bit of it right now when I decided to become a speaker I didn't just quit my job and just ran out and say I'm a motivational speaker no what I did was I decided to start looking at other people that were involved in the speaking profession I volunteered to work with some speakers so that I could learn whatever you want to do get your feet wet Gain some experience doing some volunteer work in the area and find out whether or not this thing you want to do will fit for you. A friend of mine told me he wanted to have a restaurant. I said, have you ever operated a restaurant before? He said, no. I said, well, really, you don't even know if you want one. I said, what's your expertise? What do you bring to the table? He said, I can cook real good. I said, well, what about the management side? What about the business part of the restaurant? You're not going to be cooking all the time. Somebody's got to receive the money. Who's going to manage the personnel? He said, you got a right. You got a point there. So this guy got a job in a restaurant in the evening time on a part-time basis. After doing that for a while, he said, you know what? I think I just want to be a chef. See, you got to find out what fits for you. Because you might decide that after you go up in there and examine it and experience it and, and get some experience of the about on it, well, you say, this is really not what I want. This does not fit for me. So decide that you're going to do that. Now, John H. Johnson said something that's very important. He said, there's no defense against an excellence that meets a pressing public need. See, whatever you decide to do, look at it and find out what is it that I have that I could bring to the table that can begin to enable me to ensure that I could be successful in this.